let's just start by, uh, could you describe where you were, what you were doing sure. in this? Well, first, off, first off, let me tell you that the day before uh, the, 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 the 6th, the, the 5th, we had met together in a conference for about three hours, and I was so amazed because we had talked uh, we each knew where uh, we believe the Constitution said we should go. Now, this is a Republican conference. Uh, we always start those meetings in prayer. There were three hours of solid debate on, you know, what, what could be done, what couldn't be done, uh, what our clear definition of the Constitution was. And then we prayed to actually leave because it went so well. Uh, when we left, and then the next day, you know, we weren't to go in until one in the joint session. So when we went in in the joint session, uh, there was original discussion that each conference or each uh, caucus would have uh, so many people on the floor. Uh, many of our members felt like they needed to be on the floor. They got kind of reprimanded from the speaker because we had more than 11 on the floor uh, while we were in joint session. Uh, right after that, uh, they started down the um, roll call of the states, and the first two states did not have a filing against them. Uh, Arizona did, the third one. They went through the proper procedure. The vice president then called for an immediate uh, uh, recess and adjournment of the joint session for the two houses to follow their constitutional duty to debate for two hours uh, the motions that were on the, that were presented uh, in, in legal standing. Um, we went then from there to the debate on the floor, but they wanted it cleared out. I went back to my office. Um, we knew that there were people that were around, but very calm on the streets, everything like that. I, uh, the, but the barricades were all up, so we used the tunnel. Um, you could hear early on some people out in the streets, but not, not bad. Uh, then as the debate went on and we were watching on the, on the television in, in the office, um, we wanted to, we knew that there were people on the mall and, you know, you could hear some of it, but we were on the west side or on the east side and to the north. And um, so I went down and walked out onto the uh, the, down at the entrance and walked out onto the porch of uh, the Longworth building where there were four police officers and they looked at me and said, Congressman, you're not gonna try to cross. I, I said, no, I'm not crossing the street. I said, my, with my staff and I just came out to see what was going on. It was at that moment that uh, over the radio came a pretty desperate call from one of the police officers that we're on the West uh, steps. Uh, we're being overrun. We need assistance, we need assistance. Uh, it was that time I heard a, um, uh, a flash grenade go off um, and I looked at my staff and I said, now we're gonna to return to our office. And we did, we went back into our office. Uh, during the day at different times, there was, you know, we were watching like everyone else on the television. During different times, um, during the day, uh, other buildings had to be secured. Uh, I had a couple of other members and their spouses that came in and sat in our office. At no time was our office in danger. We could look out the window and see people peacefully walking up and down the street. Um, but let me say this, when Antifa and any other group was protesting, I said they have that right to protest, as like this group, they have the right to protest. But once that protest turns to physical damage of property and hurt and the chance of physically hurting someone and or touching anyone, that is not a peaceful protest and they should be denounced for it. And, and when one group argues, well, they were infiltrated by this group or this group or that group, I'm not arguing who was there. I'm arguing the people that were there were there in violation. The people that argue that it's our house, that it is the people's house, it is the people's house, all people's house. And don't damage the other people's house or your house. Don't, don't cause trouble, don't, four deaths, no one, no one can think that's right. Right. Um, so in the, the days after this, after having gone through this, um, just what is the, what are the emotions like, but were you and your staff and, and how are you all dealing with this? 
you know, it, it, it is comparable to um, other events, the ski, Scalise shooting, 9-11 uh, when I was in Springfield. There are those times that things happen. Now understand that nothing like this has happened to our U.S. Capitol since 1812. Mm -hmm. And that was an aggressive foreign government trying to break our democracy, mm -hmm. um, our republic. And for our own citizens to do it. Um, and like I said, and to hurt people and to charge the floor, to try to break into the floor, um, all of these things where truly, I might have been in a debate disagreeing on the vote that was up and coming, but each one of us were defending the constitution based on what our job was sworn in to do. We are a peaceful form of government and we need to return to that whether it is the right or whether it is the left. And the rhetoric must calm down. The vote that took place on the floor, those two votes that I was in protest, and I can give, give my reasons, and, and it was really weighed out uh, in, in the Constitution of why I, why I voted the way I did on those two particular states, because they did not use their state legislature to set up their, their election law was changed without the, the approval of the state legislature. That's clear in the second article of the Constitution. But even if someone else disagreed, we went through that voting process, and now the electorates have been approved. And now we got 12 days, let's calm down. Let's go in and do what we have to do. I don't necessarily, I believe there was problems in the election and I don't disagree with people that have problems with the election, but the reality is, is the electorates have now been chosen and we will be moving forward in 12 days. I also do not agree with the group that are trying to impeach now with 12 days left. It's 12 days. Yeah. If we want all sides to calm down, then all sides calm down. Let's make the transition of power and let's go back to work and see where we're going from here. Logistically, is it even possible to impeach the president within 12 days? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, nor, nor go after the 25th Amendment in 12 days. Um, and, and the thing is, the people that are going after it, even though they may be joined by a few others that are angry uh, for certain reasons, and not only that, remember, they also have switched the power in, in the Senate, so they could aggressively go after it. The American people and many of those people that were protesting peacefully, I'm not, I'm not talking about the ones that broke into the Capitol, but there were, there were hundreds of thousands of people out on that mall that were there and peacefully protesting and voicing their concerns. If we want to calm this down, we shouldn't allow a process to go through on a 12 day period or even try to make it go through that has already proved out on everything since the day the guy took office has proved out that you didn't have enough to remove him from office and to do it in the last 12 days when, it, when everyone is trying to calm people down is just not a good idea. Okay. Um, today, Mike, we learned that a police officer also passed away from injuries sustained in that right. day. Um, and then there was the one woman protester who was shot and killed by Capitol Police. And then the three individuals who had the medical issues. Um, right. And that whole thing. Let me, let me say this, and then there, there's other ones that had health issues. So let me say that this is how tragic this is. Both sides. What, what's really wild is, is from what I understand, the police officer was actually um, one of the president's supporters, but he was doing his job, as all of our police officers there on Capitol Hill. Um, I don't, the details, there are rumors of what the details were. I don't want to make comments on what it is. He was killed from injuries sustained during the conflicts between them. The question on the, uh, the shot that was fired that first injured and then caused the death of uh, the, the woman who she was a veteran from what I understand, uh, a tragedy, a terrible, terrible tragedy. But if things got out of hand, they were trying to break into the chamber when the round went off. Uh, 
it struck her in the neck. Um, and no one should have went that far. No one should have been in that building when the, when the building had been secured and but yet people were breaking in. And that goes with my first statement. No one should do damage to property and our physical hurt or seek to hurt others. That is no longer a peaceful protest. I feel I, I am praying for the family of the of all four people who lost their lives. And there is going to be an investigation, I'm sure, on any time there's a discharge of a firearm by a police officer. However, the investigation also into the death of the police officer will be part of it. There will be a tremendous amount of investigation through uh, FBI uh, profile from, 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 uh, from the pictures that we have. And if a person was on the premises and involved, they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law.